Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be looking at how you can set up and manage bank rules in Myob. So a bank rule is basically where you have the opportunity to streamline certain transactions through your bank feed. They'd be uh, usually recurring transactions that come through every month or every couple of days, whatever it may be. And it allows you to run a search by a, a set of criteria, uh, looking at the text on the bank statement or the dollar amount for the purchase. And it allows you to automatically create a new transaction in Myob that is linked to that bank statement line without you actually having to physically create a spend money or a receive money transaction. So let's have a look at how you do it. We'll go to banking, bank feeds, and you can see here, we've got a bank fee for 29 cents. And over here, it says rule applied. And you can see here as well, there's another rule applied for the electricity. And if you hover over the top, it'll tell you what's happening here. The account it's going to, 62120, electricity $400. And this one's going to bank charges. So you can choose here to not apply the rule to undo the match. And we're going to go up here and have a look at manage rules. And you can see we've got two rules set up here, bank fees and electricity. Let's have a look at bank fees. So what it's doing, it's just got a rule name here. It's applying to all accounts, all bank accounts, but you can also apply it to a specific bank account. It's looking for the exact word or phrase fee. So if we go back, you can see here the wording in the statement text is bank fee. And because it's looking up for the exact word fee, that's how it's picking that up off the bank statement. So if you were to have a, another transaction that was not a bank fee, but it happened to have the word fee in the statement, then this bank fees rule will pick that up incorrectly. So you have to be a bit careful with that. Your rules, your bank rules are only as good or only as tight as your criteria here. So if you're a bit loose with the criteria, if you had any or of these other words, so you can have an exact match here or you can have any word here. So you can have a list of words to pick up or you can also search on the dollar amount. If it's the standard dollar amount that's coming through every month, let's say it's a uh, rent payment for, for $10,000 every month, then any time $10,000 comes through on your bank statement, then it's going to apply the rule. But it's up to you when you're reviewing your transactions, whether you apply it or whether you undo the match. And then down here is where you allocate the amount to a certain general ledger account. So you can see here it's going to bank charges. So let's have a look. We'll see if it's going to let us create a new bank rule here. And let's call this one rent. We only want it to apply to a single bank account. So we're going to go general check account here because we always pay rent out of the one bank account and we don't want to pick up any transactions that come from a different bank account. So whenever we pay rent to the landlord, we always have the word rent in the transaction description. So this rule is saying when the description on the bank statement contains the exact word rent, then creates a transaction for the full amount and put it to office rental. But let's say that as part of our office rent, we also pay electricity, but we don't pay electricity directly to the uh, electricity provider. We're subletting an office in a bigger building and the electricity gets divvied up between all the smaller offices there. And then it gets added onto our, our rent invoice that gets sent out to us. So in this case, because we pay our rent, but bundled in with that is our electricity for the month, but that you know, it goes up and down depending on how much we use. We don't want it all to go to office rental because it's not entirely accurate. So in this case, we're going to go show advanced options. And we can say that we know our rent is $2,000 a month. That doesn't change on the current lease. So we're going to say allocate an amount of 2000 which goes to the office rental account. And then we're going to say the remainder is going to go to electricity.
and here we have it. The remainder is going to the electricity account. So if 2200 came in, according to this bank rule, 2000 would go to office rent and 200 would go to electricity. If the next month, if our bill was for 2300 so we had 300 for electricity, then 2000 again would go to rent, about 300 would go to electricity, being the remainder. So it's quite clever like that. You can also do a percentage as well. So if you had a certain expense that came through every month or whatever it may be, and uh, say 60% of it went to one account and 40% went to another account, you can do it like that. You could say 60% here, and you could do the remainder, or you could say even just say 40%, which will give you the same result. So there is a bit of opportunity here to have a play around with it and set it up as you need it to be set up. Uh, you can put a memo in here as well, rent and electricity, and you can select a supply card. And that's pretty much it guys. So we'll go back to the main screen here in the bank feeds. So for now on, whenever you have these managed rules, you can set up as many as you want. We got some spend money types here. You can do receive money as well. It will really help to automate a lot of the recurring items on your bank statement. So instead of having to do new spend monies every time and then sort of work out how much was electricity, how much was rent and so forth and split it manually, your bank rule will can do that automatically if you have set it up to do so. You do have to be a little bit careful that your bank rule is accurate. It's good here how you can hover over the rule and you can see what's happening. You can see 400 is going to the electricity account and you can give it a quick little review of where it's going before you hit approve. Because the risk with uh, streamlining and automating transactions in, in any accounting system is that it can encourage you to be a little bit lazy and not think about things before you're hitting the approve button. So just make sure that you do have a good look at it. You give it a solid sense check. You're satisfied with where the allocation of dollar amounts is going on the general ledger accounts before you hit the approve button. Apart from that, it's a really good little tool. So anyway, guys, that's it for the video. I hope you learned something here. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments below. If you want to book in a training session, head over to our website. We specialize in accounting software, but all kinds of business software. If you have any questions, hit us up. We'll see what we can do to help you out there. Other than that, I hope you enjoy the video, and we'll catch you later.